for joining us tonight on this broadcast and on Sun Lang Interpretation tonight, we have David Agondoa, I believe. Flora Tieno, I beg your pardon. Now, could sloppiness on the part of the Director of Public Prosecutions be a risk costing Kenyans a whopping 63 billion shillings? Well, trial magistrate Eunice Nyoto in the Aror Kimore Dams graft case has blamed the collapse of the case on a choreographed prosecution-led acquittal of former National Treasury CS Henry Rotich and eight others. Note, the magistrate did not say the suspects were not guilty, but there was deliberate effort by the prosecution to present a weak case. NTV Sidney Chazima opens our broadcast tonight. <laughs> Former Treasury CS Henry Rotich was first charged in 2019 alongside more than 20 other co-accused officials over their alleged involvement in the 63 billion shilling Aurora and Kimorel Dam scandal. The prosecution at that time exuded confidence that it had sufficient evidence to lock down the case. But on this day... All the accused persons hearing are hereby acquitted under section 210 of the CPC. They are hereby acquitted under section 210 of the Criminal Procedure Code due to lack of evidence as a result of the reckless dereliction of duty by the prosecution. This case against former CS Rotich commenced in 2019 when the CS together with about 30 others were charged for alleged conspiracy to defraud the government over 500 million US dollars through the unlawful initiation and entering into construction financing and insurance agreements for the development of Aror and Kimorer dams. But when the proceedings into the case began, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions discharged a total of 24 witnesses out of an initial 32 summoned to testify against Rotich and his co-accused. In another instance, the ODPP failed to question its own witnesses. A move Magistrate Newto adjudged to be premeditated. The prosecution called a total of 49 witnesses uh, in a strange twist of events. Out of the 49 witness, prosecution witnesses, the prosecution only led witnesses from eight, only led evidence from eight witnesses. The rest of the witnesses, numbering to 41, took to the witness stand, were sworn, and thereafter the prosecution declined to examine them claiming that they did not have questions for this witness. This would appear to be a carefully choreographed prosecution-led acquittal. The anti-corruption court relied on evidence from eight witnesses only out of 49. The prosecution was no longer interested in prosecuting the case. They informed the court that they had firm instructions not to proceed. As such, this court only relied on the evidence of eight witnesses. Rotich and the eight co-accused, including David Kimosop, William Kipkemboi Minor, Paul Kipkoech Serem, Francis Chepkunga, Titus Muridi, and Geoffrey Mwangi, are now without blemish. No amount of lies, poison, and everything survive. So I think the devil has been ashamed. Um, I believe they remain permanently ashamed. Over a year now, President William Ruto, while fielding questions during the 2022 presidential candidates' debate, appeared to insinuate that the Aurora and Kimorer dam case was full of mischief. This person uh, today, you are, you, are, you are being charged tomorrow, no, remove this person the next day, remove this person the next day, change the charges, because somebody is actually waiting for... Uh, another government to come and, and carry the shit. I find that there is need to check the unfortunate and reckless habit of the ODPP commencing proceedings which they have no intention of pursuing to its logical conclusion. Such conduct is an affront to the administration of justice and a waste of precious judicial time. It is an insult to the dignity of the court and all the stakeholders involved in the criminal justice system. The anti-corruption court now wants the ODPP and those who bungled the case to be held liable for any damages that may arise from litigants suing the government. The latest turn of events may have given the Kenya Kwanzaa administration a greener light to proceed with plans to resume the construction of the scandal-ridden dams following a directive from President William Ruto. Sydney Chazima, NTV.